right, hi guys, this is Dane at Jonah Custom Guitars. Uh, we're back on the uh, Gibson J50 uh, neck reset, and I'm just going to do a little bit of an update here for you. I believe the last we dropped off the last time was I had the neck out. Uh, we talked about, I'll hold this up a little bit, talked about um, you know, sanding the uh, the back side of the heel in order to get things to, you know, get the, the angle on the neck correct so that the string height over the 12th fret and the upper end of this thing lines up with the bridge weight needs to. This is not quite all the way in yet. Uh, so I've been working my way down. I uh, believe I mentioned the masking tape uh, on the on the dovetail just to kind of, uh, as, as I was sanding and uh, you know, carving the, the neck heel into the new angle uh, to, to keep the dovetail tight with masking tape. So uh, I did that and I used, you know, varying pieces of it on the, on the end of the heel here as opposed to the upper part of the uh, heel, uh, at, you know, on the dovetail itself. And uh, so once that was set, pretty much gave me the size that I need to make my shims for um, you know, to glue in and fill up that extra space that, that is left once you relieve the back of the neck, the heel there. So, having done that, I measured the, uh, the shims, uh, masking tape shims, measured those, cut some shims out of mahogany, uh, just a little proud of those numbers, glued them onto the dovetail, and then I've just been working those in to, to get that neck in nice and snug. So that's where we're at. I'm going to go ahead and readjust the camera and get that focused in on the uh, on the bench here and on the guitar, and we'll go from there. And let's see here. Okay, I think that lines up okay. My little screen's upside down. There we go. Maybe we'll zoom in just a bit on that. All right, so I had the tape kind of outlined here, if you recall, to from my side to side, so my string live from the neck. Oops from the net to where the string is going to be. And uh, that's looking really good the way it lines up on top of the fretboard there, uh, top to bottom. And uh, I'm only just a fraction off the top of the guitar now. About a sixteenth. So um, the mahogany shim, uh, that's chalk you see there actually, that white stripe. But So you've got uh, the mahogany shim there, otherwise you'd be looking at the end grain coming out of that dovetail and uh, that on both sides. And so uh, you know, I want this tip to be extremely snug as it goes in. So I'm done removing material from there even though there is chalk on that. I'm going to take a little bit off the top on these um, and uh, I showed you this before it's just an angle block with sandpaper on it. the angle fits the angle on the dovetail All right so that as you sand the dovetail either side that angle uh, maintains the angle that the dovetail needs to be sanded at um, and I'll do a little bit of that on camera just so you have an idea what that's like but I also decided I was going to need to shim the, uh, the end of the fretboard because I don't want to have it dipping down right here at the, you get the idea. I don't want to come off of here and then have it dive to the sound hole. So I am going to be shimming that up. But it looks like at the most it's going to be about six or 464s or 16th at the thickest point at this end and then down to nothing on the, you know, on the end, right at the beginning here, where it meets the, meets the heel. 
So, um, yeah. So I'm looking at the chalk to see where it's at. Uh, like I said, I was only about a sixteenth off. Just do a little bit of sand. I'm not going to do much, and I'm not. I'm not hitting this edge at all here. I'm strictly. It's laying in here, but I'm pulling it back away from that heel, that point there of the dovetail, so I don't get any sanding on it. So we're really just just sanding right up at the top here and down into the top uh, third of this area. I do very, very little at a time. Oh, you know, I just I keep thinking about this because I know at one of my previous videos on this guitar, I um, I mentioned that there wasn't a great deal of, of lacquer build up between the neck heel and the body and uh, so that I, I thought possibly that they had finished all the way through well it's obvious that they didn't finish all the way through because there's no stain on the mahogany here and and no lacquer so uh, much much darker where they where they stained it I did pick up some brown uh, leather dye from uh, what's the name of that dye it's Phoebe's, Phoebe's leather dye. I got dark brown and black. Picked up some black just in case I ever need to uh, dye a fretboard. Um, and to give you an idea of the color of that brown leather dye on there. And you can get an idea. It's a little, you gotta, you gotta understand too that when you put finish on top of a dye or stain, it darkens it up. So, um, and you can put more than one layer of color on here as well. So, uh, just where the where the neck joins back to the body, there's a slight slight line. Uh, there was a little bit of a chip out right right under this tape, actually a little bit of a chip out. And so I'll stain that actually before I put it back together, and uh, I'll just run a line all the way around this of stain just to. Uh, to make sure that we don't have this this uh, light light wood bleeding through, I could do it after the neck was in place, but I just think I'll get a better job if I do that first. Then I will indeed have to touch lacquer up around the neck uh, to fill that fill that crack where that's going. You can see here even now when I steamed the neck off, uh, I had a flap right here of lacquer that was kind of blowing up, and I was going to actually just run some super glue under that and and hold it down, but by the time I got uh, back to the neck, the piece of lacquer was gone, so I didn't realize it, but I must have laid it down on it and cracked it off. Anyway, uh, there's a little bit of chipping around. Uh, you may not be able to see that, but a little chipping around the edge of the neck here. And um, I'll probably put some stain on that as well, although it's, it's already a little darker wood. Uh, and that'll just be a matter of actually finishing that. Uh, touching up the lacquer. So then this is a uh, red mahogany and the uh, red mahogany is very close to uh, the rosewood um, color of the fretboard here and all you're going to see is a sixteenth inch of it you know under the edge of the board here so once that's all you know fit you, you got you got nothing on this end to a sixteenth on the on the tail end of the thing here. This is about an eighth right now in thickness so half that thickness to nothing up here anyway that'll blend in there really nicely that particular tone of wood uh, I can also throw some dye on it uh, everything will blend in very nicely so I did a little bit of sanding on that we're going to test it and see how it fits and just push it on in okay it's about the same place as it was last time. Uh, you can't really tell from there. There you go. I like to I like to just tweak the neck back a little bit to see how how tight it is down here on the bottom. And I got a little bit of play down there, so I'm definitely not removing any material on this end of thing. By the time that snugs up down here, that should definitely take that play out. 
So I am not removing material from this end of it. Okay, I'm just looking at things as I go here, so um, I really want to leave what thickness I have on this shim over here. I'm getting a pretty even, even smear on the chalk here, so it's not like I'm hitting in one spot. And uh, I've got a pretty even smear here as well, but I'm just going to go up toward the middle half. I'm going to work on this side actually. Yeah, I want this to kind of lay over this way a little bit. Once again, I don't want to take any off the very end here. That guy's bottomed out there pretty good right now. It's all the way down. Maybe you can see that. Okay, I'll try to get you lined up here. Yeah, it's down right where it goes here. It's touching, touching against the top. Right in there. Looks like the neck is the fretboard is down where it needs to be for the to cover the old part. Now I'm a little off, but I was more concerned about how my strings lined up. Okay, so that looks really good. Okay, so pretty happy with that. What I'm going to do at this point is uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this uh, filler, little shim out under there and then I'll, I'll take it down, whittle it down to the finished thickness I wanted and then I'll taper it down to uh, nothing on the, uh, on the end that goes right up against the heel here. So I'm just going to work on that. I'm not going to keep the film running for that. Um, and uh, that once again, I get ready to glue everything back together. I will make a note now. I don't know if I'll, if I'll film it or not. That when I glue the shim on, I'll glue the shim to the actual fretboard extension first, and I'm going to put it on with uh, tight bond. Um, when I glue the neck in, I'll be using uh, high glue, hot high glue. Um, I'm not positive on this year what they use, but that's what I'm going to put it back in with. Um, the, um, the reason I'm using two different kinds of glue is if we ever have to pull a neck again, I want the shim to come off with, with the board. I don't want the shim to stay on the face of the guitar. And so it'll be uh, better to have the high glue, the, uh, the tight bond on the fretboard because uh, it's, it's a little more difficult to separate than the high glue. So we're going to go that route. All right, just so you know where I'm going with that. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to get on with this thing. Hopefully, I'll get this shim in here tonight and uh, be able to get this put back together fairly soon. Thanks for watching.